Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before we bring on our esteemed member of the ATP family and worldwide foreign policy expert, Claire Lopez, I want to remind all of you out there in ATP land, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe now to our text message alert system. It'll give you all of the content at ATP, including today's show, absolutely for free on the cell phone that you're probably holding in your hand. Now it's simple, just text the word truth, T-R-U-T-H, and address it to the number 88202 when you push send. We'll sign you up in about three or four seconds, and it's absolutely free. Thank you for doing that. Claire Lopez is here. She's an expert in foreign policy, especially on jihad. She has a long history with the United States government and intelligence, the CIA and the State Department. So when she says something, you should listen. She's the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. Welcome back to the family, Claire. Thank you, Barry. I'm very glad to be back with you. Let's start with jihad in the West. I know you know all about this. Um, jihadi attacks are becoming more and more common in the West, especially in Great Britain that has had a virtually open door policy that if you want to come to our country, we don't care where you're coming from and we don't care what your ideology is because we're just stupid. Um, and that has really taken effect, uh, their lax policy with the assassination of a member of parliament in church the other day. Uh, the fellow that was stabbed in the church, David Ames, was a strong supporter of both the United States and Israel. Uh, he was killed, obviously, by a jihadi uh, from Somalia, I think. And um, two questions for you. Um, even though this guy professes the murderer to be a, an adherent of radical Muslim ideology and has said so, the press doesn't acknowledge it. They call him someone who's misguided. Um, why is the truth not being told and why won't Britain do something about it to fix it? You know, that, that's a million dollar question, Barry. Um, I mean, this was a real tragedy. This past Friday, the 15th of October, here we are, 2021. Uh, and uh, the MP, David Ames, had been a member of parliament since 1983, I think the longest serving MP then in the parliament. Um, everyone who, who talked about him, including Prime Minister Boris Johnson, um, you know, called him the nicest, um, warmest person, leaves behind a wife and five children. Um, and uh, he, yeah, he was meeting with his constituents, uh, which he did every two weeks. Now, unfortunately, um, they have taken personal security for MPs in Britain, I think, probably too lightly, and I'm hoping they're looking at that now, um, but they actually would post on, on uh, the member's uh, parliamentary website uh, the time and the place of the constituent meeting, and, and, and this one happened to be taking place in this uh, Methodist church in a, um, a town just outside of London uh, this past Friday, when yes, this uh, Somali jihadi, Ali Harbi Ali, his name, 25 years old, uh, from Somalia, um, stabbed him to death in front of the horrified onlookers. Uh, and uh, Scotland Yard uh, and other police in, in Britain are, are investigating, of course, uh, but they're calling it, um, yes, an, an act of terror, um, and, but they can't figure out the motive. They, they just, they, they don't know what the motive might be. Maybe they could, um, if they just looked at the Quran, it would be very simple. I could show them the passage, or you could. <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, that's something they apparently have not done. Um, we can look at verse 9, 5 of the Quran, for example, which says, fight and kill the infidel. Uh, wherever you may find him, lay in wait, ambush him in every stratagem of war. Uh, and it appears that's what this young man did. Uh, I'll mention that he is the son of a Somali former diplomat who had served in London, and that's uh, where he was born, apparently, and, and raised, uh, living most recently with an aunt and cousins on a very posh street, apparently, of two million pound homes, homes worth two million pounds. So it wasn't poverty. 
um, wasn't uh, life's misfortune that, that drove him to do uh, what he did, this heinous murder. Let's, let's jump to the other side of the world uh, in the other direction, and I mean China. Uh, you've pointed out that China has successfully tested, I guess, what they're calling a doomsday weapon. It's a nuclear-capable hypersonic cruise missile that apparently circled the entire globe in this test at very low altitudes at ridiculous speeds. How bad is this weapon, and do we have defenses against it? Well, I'll tell you, what, what really surprised me, Barry, is that um, although the, the, the Chinese flight of uh, this test flight of this uh, uh, hypersonic uh, cruise missile apparently took place in August, uh, the media and we, the public, just heard about it quite recently here in October. Um, and the intelligence community, speaking through, as they always do, anonymous sources, um, immediately said they were taken by surprise. They had no idea what, that this was coming or that the Chinese had this technology, although we're the ones that gave it to them, um, or uh, that we do not have uh, currently any defenses against it. And the reason is that a hypersonic cruise missile flies very, very fast, but also can change direction uh, multiple times and very quickly in flight, which makes it extremely difficult to pick up or to, to con counter, to latch onto, to destroy in flight. Um, but I cannot imagine that the U.S. intelligence community did not know about this. Um, for example, quick story, very quick. I was at a restaurant with uh, a table full of people. It was either two or three years ago. And among the people at the table was a Boeing engineer. And that engineer and I were talking about this very missile, open source public information. And the engineer confirmed that yes, China had it, and no, the United States had no defense against it. This was totally public conversation around a restaurant table two or three years ago. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Wow. Well, not only is China testing a weapon that maybe we can't do anything about, which means we're in trouble defensively, but they're making their most aggressive verbal threats and intrusions into Taiwan airspace, maybe in history. None of this would have happened or could have happened or did happen when Trump was in office because he made it very clear. You screw with Taiwan, you're screwing with the United States. Biden has been kissing up to China and what we got in response to our perceived appeasement is the threat of we're going to invade, destroy and absorb the island of Taiwan. Taiwan says they will fight to the death to defend themselves. What do you think the United States is gonna do if China crosses the strait and starts bombing Taiwan? Well, a couple of things. Yes, over the last uh, weeks, um, uh, the Chinese Communist Party has flown multiple uh, sorties of dozens of fighter planes into Taiwan airspace. Um, I have seen a couple of, what, encouraging responses. Uh, the United States and Britain uh, have uh, sailed uh, naval vessels, I think including aircraft carriers, uh, through the Taiwan Straits. And I will say that I've been encouraged by statements coming from the Foreign Ministry of Japan, a member of the Quad. The Quad is India, Japan, Australia, and the United States. Um, those statements, uh, to the effect that the Quad ought to defend Taiwan if it is threatened with invasion uh, by uh, the, the, the Chinese Communist Party. Um, but other than that, um, the, the, the bold and, and, and aggressive behavior of the Chinese um, military uh, in what in, inside of what it calls the Nine Dash Line that it claims as its own waters, which encroach upon the waters than the exclusive economic zones of any number of, of uh, nations uh, in, in the area. Taiwan, of course, Japan, Philippines, and more. Um, but they claim that and they've built up islands in those places, we know, militarize them uh, with very little uh, real deterrent opposition from this current administration of ours. Yes or no? You ready? 
Will we help defend Taiwan if they are attacked? Well, you, you know, we do have, we the United States, we do have a uh, defense, not a defense treaty, um, but, but a, um, I'm not quite sure what to call it, but a, a special relationship uh, with Taiwan. We have sold them weapons, advanced defensive weapons. Uh, and we just learned very recently in the media uh, that the United States has actually had troops, US troops inside of Taiwan training Taiwan, uh, Taiwan's uh, armed forces uh, in defensive measures. So I don't know, there, there are encouraging signs and there are not. Of course, we're all waiting uh, for the February 2022 uh, Olympic games that will be held in China. It seems likely to me that the CCP will hold off on any kind of all out invasion until after uh, those games uh, because they want to put on a good show uh, for uh, themselves uh, to showcase China in February of 2022. Yeah, exactly. Right before they kill maybe several million people across the Straits of Taiwan. Um, Claire, where can people hear about you and find out about what you're doing? Well, certainly here at uh, the American Truth Project, uh, you mentioned one way to get cell phone uh, notifications. Another is to text my name, L-O-P-E-Z, Lopez, to the number 88202, and you will get uh, notifications of all of my appearances, like this video we're doing right now. Uh, you can also find my writing and other videos at the Citizens Commission on Benghazi, uh, at the David Horowitz Freedom Center, Jamie Glazoff, uh, the Glazoff gang for the videos and front page for things that I'm, I've been writing. Um, also uh, at uh, the United West, where I also uh, post and, and publish my pieces. I'm on social media at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter, same at Facebook, and Lopez Liberty on Telegram. Woo, busy lady. <laughs> I, I encourage everybody that's listening out there, follow and learn what Claire has to say. You're gonna be a smarter person for it. Um, for those of you that haven't yet, please subscribe, do it on your cell phone. It's 88202 is the number and truth is the message, or you can send it to Claire on Lopez and we will sign you up either way. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. <laughs>